All right, let's welcome to DFIR 11, lab number one, IOC research. The lab objective is to understand how to identify indicators of compromise using Wireshark. Our lab mission will be to download dangerous malware and identify the indicators of compromise using Wireshark. We're gonna need our Windows 10 operating systems this exe file that i've copied from my extra lab files as well as wireshark the malware in this lab was created for use in this lab and is the v9 side note you should never run any malware on your computer if it's not part of the controlled environment for your virtual machine all right, so let's go ahead and begin here. We're going to make sure that our computer is on a NAT network. I'm going to go and check my IP address here. Let's go ahead and uh, open my network settings here. Let's take a look at my properties. And yep, there's my NAT network 10.0.2.5. Okay, cool. We are happy with that. Let's go ahead and let's see. They would like us to yep, check our IP address. We did that. You could also do it from the command line, you know, by typing in IP config. And next thing they want us to do is to take a snapshot of your machine. So go ahead and take a snapshot if you would like. All right, so once that's done, go ahead and install Wireshark. I already have Wireshark installed, but it is included in the extra lab files and it's next, next, next. And make sure you have all of your components selected. And you want to install the NPCAP file, agree to the licensing agreement, and then install. And then click on finish. And then once Wireshark is installed, we are going to observe its behavior. So let's go ahead and launch Wireshark. All right, I'm gonna say skip this version. Okay, so Wireshark is installed. And let's see, I want to capture Let's see, click on the capture icon. So I've got uh, traffic coming in here. Let's take a look at my network and adapters. Network and adapter. Let's go to the control panel. Make sure that I am actually capturing on the right interface here, network and sharing center. And then I got uh, ethernet two and ethernet three. So I'm gonna do ethernet to here i do see i got some traffic there so all right let's go ahead and capture and let's see what see let's see if i get anything right here okay yeah so i am i'm already getting traffic just normal traffic on my wire next they want us to double click on the executable file here so let's go ahead and do that All right, so the exploit has run and it is still running. And then we're gonna wait for this window to close and then we're gonna go ahead and stop the capture. All right, now that our capture has stopped, we want to take a look at the traffic and just see if we see anything suspicious right out of the gate. So let's go ahead and move our filter here. And let's see if we see funky traffic here. All right, I got some DNS requests from 
Google, some retransmission request. Let's see. My IP is what 10.0.2. I believe I am. Yeah, 10.0.2.5. So anything coming from here is my IP address. And I got a lot of stuff talking on this network. And what they want us to do is look for some type of suspicious traffic here. So what we're going to do is analyze all the traffic. And we can do that really quickly by going to the statistics tab. And then we want to click on IPv4 statistics. And then we want to click on all addresses here. And what, what, we, you know, what is interesting is uh, traffic count, right? And we might want to investigate that to say, hey, what are we talking to the most right here? Um, in my example, I have about 827 packets. And uh, let's see if we can sort by the size here. Yeah, most of them were sent from my IP address. Now, your number might be different. These numbers could fluctuate depending on how long you leave Wireshark running totally okay here and uh, what we, what we want to do now is filter our traffic you know based off of your IP address and what we could do is we know my IP address is 10.0.2.5 you can do the same thing on yours and I'm going to you know close this here and we're going to put in a display filter and we're just going to make it my IP address. And you can see right here, as you start to type, it's going to start to give you some suggestions here. And if it's all green, you get that color. And, you know, we, our traffic is now filtered out. All right. And again, we're looking for, you know, unusual traffic here. So, at first, it might be kind of hard to tell, but again, we are looking for traffic that's going to the same source or a whole bunch of traffic going to, you know, one IP address that you've never seen before. And the whole part of this is to know your network, right? Know what IP addresses that you normally go to in your environment. You can do some type of historical uh, traffic capture, do trending, trend analysis to find out, you know, what is normal in your environment. And uh, we do start to see some interesting traffic right here. The 7.26421136 traffic, that is different. You know, we could always go and do the MX lookup and find out what type of traffic this is. But again, that's the point of this. So, we do see we got lots of traffic here. We are sorting by my IP address here. And let's go ahead and do some more analysis. So we'll go back to our st statistics screen here. And we're, this time we're going to do protocol hierarchy. All right. And we say, like, OK, what's going on on our network? So let's um, take a look right here. So we got uh, most of this is uh, TCP IP network traffic you know that's fine let's see what else do we have here we have some uh icmp traffic that might be worth investigating and of course we got um let's see do we have any udp traffic udp yeah we got a, a like little bit here not too much most most of our traffic as you can see the large volume of it is yeah tcp ip and ICMP, we got some DNS uh, traffic right there as well. So again, when it comes to um, task night, it says which protocols are suspicious and B, which are the most commonly used protocols? Well, let's say uh, one thing is, one thing that is suspicious is the ICMP traffic. It's so low here. It's only a tiny percent of my traffic here. Um, so 
and a large volume of a TCP traffic, right? And this is during the time that we loaded the, the malware file because nothing else was going on on this network. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this screen out here. And our next ask is to add to the previous filter using a, a Boolean to get TCP packets. So let's go ahead and add to our um, filter here. And we're only going to look at the TCP traffic. All right. So that was pretty easy to do here. And what they want us to do is right click on the first packet and follow the stream, right? Follow this conversation here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we see we have some stuff that is encrypted. Nothing here, nothing really. Yeah, we, we can't decipher this yet. So we got to keep on digging. So let's close this one. And let's clear out our filter here. And let's go back to our, our unusual traffic here. So let's do, let's put back in our filter. As you can see, Wireshark saves it here for us. And we're going to start to look at some of that unusual traffic. So that first stream didn't give us any you know any tangible results, but uh, let's take a look at some of that traffic before that I, I that I, I um, identified as being you know a uh, funky here. So I'm looking for those 7.26 IP addresses here, and you can see a lot of stuffs going on on my network. Let's see, keep on going, keep on going. Here we go, found it. All right, so. I'm curious in this packet here. So let's take a look here. And I want to do follow TCP stream. Okay. Now this is interesting right here. I'm actually able to decrypt this. And I said, okay, this is my uh, desktop account here. And look what it's doing. It is enumerating user account names. So it's finding out, hey, who's on my computer? Uh, normally you would not want to see that on your network. So we can um, keep on following this stream here and uh, let's see what we can find out here. So we're going to change our stream value here and see if we can't figure out more. And you can see that at the bottom right here, we got 42 total streams. And as you start to uh, go up and down, you're going to start to get uh, other information here. So I think that stream that we saw was what, 42? There we go. Yes, yeah, so let's go up. So the next thing we see with this same packet is now they are uh, running, you know, IP config. Uh, look at that. They're doing some more enumeration here, finding out who is logged on to my computer. You know, that could be a suspect. You know, they're all there just trying to discover what's going on. And then look right here. This is pretty interesting. Uh, they want to know what type of privileges I have on my account. You know, they are doing that, you know, they are doing the actual discovery phase of their attack. Let's keep on looking. Uh, they, okay, they're seeing that uh, 10.0.2.1 is up, you know, trying to just ping different portions of the network. 10.0.2.1 is probably my gateway. Let's keep on looking. 10.0.2 up. Okay, so they're doing like a port scan saying, hey, what nodes are up on my network? And they're doing one more. 10.0.3 up is up. Uh, okay, so yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of funky stuff here. Let's keep on let's keep on going. See what see what else we can find here. 10.0.5 is up. And oh, look at that. Stream 40, do you want to perform WannaCry? <laughs> we do not want to perform WannaCry. We don't want to encrypt our computers. But, you know, um, all this came from that executable file that we ran on the 
desktop here, you can see malware sent information about the computer to the IP, which is most likely some kind of command and control server. It performs reconnaissance of the host machine and network as a preliminary step before an attack and can execute system commands. Uh, the next question says, okay, which IOCs were discovered during the process? What else can you discover about the remote IP address that was involved? So we can infer that this exploit was, was running a couple of different commands, right? And if I go to the command line, I can show you some, some of those commands. So the first one was the who am I? Right, they want to find out who the user is. The next one is the net user, right? Other one they were they ran is the IP config. And last one is system info. Right. Um, telling me everything that's going on, you know, with my computer. So they, again, they're just, they're just doing lots of reconnaissance right now. And we also saw that some ping requests were coming in there. That was the ICMP traffic. What else we can do is we can also, you know, investigate the IP address of the machine that uh, that the malware was like trying to ping to the actual command and control server. So let's go ahead and go to Google.com, and we're going to type in the IP address. See if we can't find some information here. So 7.26.42.136. And let's see what we got on here. We have some stuff here. Look at this one. An IP address is an indicator of compromise commonly used in identifying with remote malicious sources such as botnets, command control. All right, so let's just take a look. See what the alien vault says with the open threat exchange. But yeah, that you know. Let's see connection errors here. Let's see some comments. Let's see. Hist look at these. Maybe these were hysteric, historical nefarious IPs. And it looks like basically, yeah. So maybe at some point in the time in the past, yeah, this IP was definitely part of some type of botnet, you know. And one other thing that you can take a look at is the uh, what uh, threat? I think it's what Cisco threat. Uh, let's let's do Talos. Yeah, Talos reputation check, and we'll try there. Is good. this this one's a great little website I use if I'm doing investigations, and we're gonna try that same IP again. Of course, you know now the IP address could be cleaned up, but again, this is just a lab for demonstration purposes. All right. So nothing currently looks like, yeah, in the past it was, it had a bad reputation, but currently um, it's owned by the uh, DOD Network Information Center. And that is the end of lab number one, right? To actually capture traffic as malware is being exploited on a system. All right, I'll see you on the next one.